Yeah. So uh, before we go forward, uh, can we begin with a word of prayer, please? And I would like to request any one of us to please lead in prayer. How about Aradhna? Aradhna, do you want to pray? Yeah, you would need to unmute yourself. Thank you for uh, thank you, Father God, for this day, Lord, you've given us for doing your Bible college, Lord. Help each one, Lord, to remember all the words and all the things, Lord. Thank you for ma'am. Bless her, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And thank you. Thank you, Aradna. That was nice. Yes. Uh, so we will continue from where we stopped. Would somebody like to share what you learned in the last class? Just a few lines. So that will be a good way to start today. Briefly. You can look at your notes, no problem. What did Pastor. we learn in the... Yes, yes, please, please. Go ahead, Rosalind. Now we learned uh, about prayer, what prayer is and what prayer yes. is not. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. That's what we learned. And uh, we also were able to touch on two um, foundations for uh, an effective and a powerful prayer life. The first one being understanding the nature of God from the word of God. And uh, the second one being developing intimacy with God. You know, So that prayer is not just about asking for what we want and then forgetting uh, about God, but we are reminded in his word to abide in his word. We are reminded in his word that we are called to fellowship with the Godhead, the Godhead meaning the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And uh, this is the example Jesus left for us to walk with the Father, right? To do the will of the Father, to display the works of the Father. And that intimacy uh, is something that we too must develop in our uh, relationship with God. And how are we going to do this? You know, we talked about the fact that uh, we need to spend time with God, like any other natural relationship. You know, if there is no communication, if there is no interaction, then we won't be able to build that relationship with God. So it's important to, to spend time with God, give it priority, uh, give the relationship with God priority, uh, practice transparency where, you know, we are uh, honest and sincere. The things that we say to God, uh, the way we respond to what he puts on our hearts, you know, when we are sincere and obedient, right? Uh, then our relationship is a strong relationship with God. And we cannot hide uh, uh, things in our hearts like sin and, uh, uh, you know, uh, have a hard heart, have a callous heart and still expect God to work in our lives. Uh, that That is not what scripture teaches. And we, we talked about the fact that uh, while we uh, pray, we speak to God, we are also intentional about hearing from him because it's a relationship. And uh, to grow uh, in this relationship, we also develop uh, uh, you know, that desire to be with God. So then we practice things like waiting upon the Lord, uh, soaking in his presence, just abiding in his presence uh, and, and just, you know, enjoying uh, who God is, where he is. We, we, you know, love to spend time with him. And from this place of intimacy, you know, we will overflow uh, into the things that God wants to release into our hearts. And, you know, the way uh, uh, we we get to know someone really well uh, when, you know, we, we are close to them in the same way, whatever is upon the Lord's heart, you know, we will begin to learn that even the secrets uh, of the word of God, we are told that God will reveal to us when we uh, spend time with him. 
in this manner and then there are lots of other uh, privileges that that we can experience like you know we can have god encounters we can uh, see greater fruitfulness in our lives and all this is promised to us when we are intimate with god but there can be some barriers to this and we we talked about uh, you know being conscious of sin uh, and thereby the guilt keeps us out of the presence of god and carrying all kinds of other things in our hearts like bitterness strife uh, you know and all of such things so today uh, we will touch on the uh, next foundation uh, and that is the redemptive heart of god so under the redemptive heart of god what we learn is that god um, in his nature is redemptive okay god uh, is the one who is always working on restoration how do we know this you know, when you look at the old testament you would find uh uh the way in which god worked in the lives of israel now israel uh is god's nation uh, and god chose that nation but we would notice that in many places israel rebelled against god but still you know you would find uh, god speaking through prophets and him ministering to the children of israel and saying you know i will restore you i have redeemed you i will bring you back you know i will give you a new foundation so what does that reveal about the way god is relating to his people there is restoration involved right and there are so many other examples when you look at the life of ruth okay somebody who was uh, 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 completely uh, cut off from any form of uh, goodness right she had to leave her own people her husband died her uh, in-laws uh, died and she just had her mother-in-law naomi to be with moving into a foreign land no food but that story right uh, from the life of ruth it's actually a picture of god's restoration when there's nothing when there's brokenness when there's ruin when there's devastation you know when there is weakness when there is no hope god gives hope okay so we we see how god uh, helped her find a, a job uh, and then eventually uh, the favor of of a righteous man called boaz and then we read how ruth is in the very uh, uh, lineage of the lord jesus christ and that's again a picture for us about the redemptive heart of god how god works to bring back those who are downcast uh, into his plans and purposes in a restored manner right so uh, we must always remember in our prayer lives that uh, god is a god of restoration so because of that uh, no matter what situation we see right in that situation we can still expect the redemption uh, that god has to offer now romans 8 is a very uh, a common passage uh, that that shows us you know how god works in our lives uh, romans 8 verses 38 and 39 uh, it's there in our notes here i think it'll be good for somebody to read it uh, verse uh, pa- page 11 please can somebody read romans 8 verses 38 and 39 for i am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of god which is in christ jesus our lord Mm. amen thank you roslyn amen amen so you see how god is showing us that even the things that are supposed to um separate us from god right they they are difficult things uh, which could make us discouraged and uh, uh, uh you know take us far away from god even those things cannot separate us from god and that's the 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 love that he has for us and that's the way in which he holds on to us right what a what an assurance what a security what a comfort we have uh, you know in the redemptive heart of god for us uh, that he will not let go of us you know in that same uh, page on the notes there there is one more verse uh, from hebrews chapter 7 uh, and it's verse 25 one more person could you please read it 
Hebrews 7:25 Hebrews 7:25 hmm. Therefore he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him since he always lived to make intercession for them Mm. Thank you, Sitkenu. Um, again, you know, this is a scripture that shows us that he's able to save to the uttermost. Okay. Uh, those who come to God through him. So when we reach out to God uh, in the most desperate circumstances, he's able to restore. So in our prayer lives, when we realize that this is the God we serve, a God who is able to restore, the way we pray will be very different. You know, uh, we could end up praying that, oh God, my situation is hopeless. You know, I, I have lost everything in life. Um, I have wasted my time. Uh, you know, I, uh, my... Uh, uh, my life is ruined uh, or uh, you know we could we could come to those places because of different circumstances maybe uh, things have not gone in our well in our education or uh, you know in the workplace things have not worked out or maybe it's a family issue where there is a rebellious child or uh, a, a very difficult spouse to deal with right different things that could have happened but in the midst of those things if we understand the redemptive heart of god the way we will pray is we will say god even though i am in this situation i know that you are a redeemer you are a restorer you are the god who can recover what was lost you're a god who can regain what was wasted right you're a god who can restore what was ruined you can release whatever is bound. God, you can rebuild whatever is destroyed. You can make, oh God, whatever has been, uh, you know, uh, marred and, and, and become uh, displeasing to your sight. Lord, you can still beautify it. You can take away our shame. You can bring healing uh, to the wounds. You can renew, you know, whatever uh, is worn down. And God, you can revive whatever is dead in my life and you are the god of resurrection so embracing the redemptive heart of god allows us to pray through his redemption instead of uh, saying things like oh you know my son he will never change or uh, this so and so person there is no hope for this person right so i'll pray okay god anyway he does not have any hope forget it so we will not pray prayers like that when we are clear that our God is a God of restoration. And you know, so much more for us on the other side of the cross here, because we are told that the Lord Jesus has paid the price for our sins and he has become that sacrifice, right? The redeeming sacrifice for us. So whatever we are going through, maybe a difficulty in our finances, you know, we can still come before the Lord and say, God, you know, I intercede because of what Jesus has done on the cross for me. And I know, Lord, that this situation can turn around. This situation can change, uh, oh God. And um, you are the God who saves to the uttermost. You know, somebody uh, said that uh, uh, God saves to the guttermost, okay? Meaning uh, situations that are so bad, so horrible, you know, he is still a God. You know, if he has he has spoken that in his word and said it can be done, then it can be done, right? So he is the God of the impossible. And we must embrace the redemptive heart of God. And then we will see the power of God manifest even in uh, challenging situations. Yeah. So uh, class, please feel free to interject uh, at any point if you have questions or even comments. OK, I'm moving on so that I can cover uh, more ground quickly. Uh, oh, OK, uh, we have uh, Ebenezer with uh, Ebenezer Godavarti with a question. Yes, please go ahead, uh, Ebenezer. Uh, thank you, madam. <clears throat> uh, yes. I had a uh, it is not a question, uh, just a, uh, God is a redemptive one. Uh, at the same time, He may permit some uh, sufferings so uh, so that we may stand uh, in Him. 
uh, at the same time um, uh, he will give support just uh, to face those sufferings and stand for him uh, he may not uh, redeem from that suffering also no matter okay so yeah thank you uh, thank you for that uh, comment there epinesa and a question uh, included in that so see the way we see from the nature of god um the way god works in our lives uh, there are trials okay in this world there are tribulations in this world because jesus said in this world you will have tribulation uh, take heed you uh, i have overcome the world so in terms of opposition to the work of god you see that uh, in the early church whenever they went to minister to different places there was persecution there was opposition you know things like this uh, we know that we will face all these things so there are trials in our lives okay and yeah. the bible does talk about um, some tests that we will go through but these tests are uh, you know these tests are just to promote us in the way, when we respond rightly with obedience to god we just come up higher in the lord so yes there are tests that we all will go through now does god put affliction uh, on our lives in the form of let's say sickness to uh, make us better or uh, you know to uh, he will give that sickness and then he will give us the strength to overcome that sickness so specifically in the matter of sickness i would say no because we see that uh, uh the lord jesus uh, he demonstrated the father to us and the lord jesus demonstrated the healing works of god the delivering works of god so does god intentionally put something uh put sickness on us or put you know like a demonic oppression on us no that is not uh something that god would do but yes when we face a test or when we face trials that are existent in the world out there god will give us the grace to go through some of these things right so i hope that uh, answers your question yes madam thank yeah. you yeah thank you all right yeah very good question there yes but in everything uh, right we we look to the restoration uh, that god can bring into our lives and you know there are uh, so many testimonies you and i can talk about uh, just because of uh, the lack of time we won't be able to cover if i just ask the question okay tell me share your uh, share your stories i'm sure all of you will have a story to share from your own personal life from your own family saying this is what the lord has done but that is the god we serve a god of restoration so pray through restoration over the lives of people okay uh, so that is is another foundational truth for us to have to have an effective prayer life the fourth uh, foundation here is to know the promises of god okay uh, why should we know the promises of god because the promises of god are given to us through the covenant that he has made for us right so when we know the promise we know to ask in line with the promise now one scripture that uh, we see in the lord's prayer is he jesus taught us to pray in matthew 6:10 uh, thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven okay so thy kingdom come what kind of kingdom is there in heaven you know you see the dominion of our god you see the rule and reign of our god with absolutely no interference of sin uh, in heaven right so in the same way we want to see the rule and reign of our god here on the earth we want to see the rule and reign of our king in our personal lives okay so when i know this promise god has promised the rule and reign of heaven right now in my life i can speak that and i can say god i want to experience the righteousness the peace the joy of the kingdom in my life today because it's a promise you have given it to me okay and i'm your child i can experience it so in this manner there are so many promises of god right all the promises of god are yes and amen the book of corinthians uh, tells us but if i don't know the promise then how do i claim the promise when i'm sick you know isaiah 53 he carried uh, my wounds you know he carried my sorrows he carried my griefs he carried my sickness uh, 
by his stripes i am healed if i don't know that in my sickness i will never know to pray the promise of healing over myself okay so it's important to know the promises so i pray healing for myself i pray you know oppression shall be far from you scripture says so i pray deliverance over myself i pray the blessing of god you no know? uh, i am created for good works in christ jesus uh, he will bless the work of my hands right uh, i he will make me the head and not the tail what am i doing when i am speaking all these words basically i know the promises of god and i'm fighting for those promises in my life and as i pray uh, the promises you know i will begin to see them uh, manifest and that will become an encouragement for me and and i'll be like wow you know i've already seen all these things fulfilled i i'm sure the lord will do greater things in my life and i keep pressing forward in my journey with the lord so knowing the promises of god is very very important and god's promises are revealed through his word there is a scripture given in our notes here beautiful scripture from psalm 119 and verse 89 which says that forever o lord your word is settled in heaven so what god has spoken what god has already given to us you know that is firm that cannot be shaken when god has spoken right it is done so i can have assurance in the word that god has released in his promise and my prayer life should be built on that word so when i pray you know, i quote a lot of scriptures and say god your word says you said right you said your word says and i'm standing on the promises of god and that makes my prayer life very very uh, effective moving forward a partnering with the holy spirit is also a uh, very crucial for an effective prayer life now we are told that the holy spirit see the holy spirit he has many facets okay and in zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10 one of the names that is given uh, or let's say uh, one of the um, uh, highlights of what he does is that he is a spirit of supplication he is a spirit of grace and supplication we are told meaning he uh uh knows how to speak and ask the father so the holy spirit who knows to ask the father earnestly is the same spirit who can help me make my prayers to the lord so i can take the help of the spirit of grace and supplication okay in my own prayer life and that will help me be effective in my walk with the lord so uh, we can uh, get that support from the holy spirit we are also told that the holy spirit helps us in our own weaknesses right when we do not know what to pray uh, he himself makes intercession for us through groanings which cannot be uttered this is in romans chapter 8 verses 26 and 27 and it is basically referring to praying in the spirit or praying in tongues right so in my prayer life it is also important for me to be led by the holy spirit why because the holy spirit can actually guide me into the things that uh the father has on his heart okay if you remember the life of jesus uh, a lot of things that jesus did you know he would hear the father tell him something or he would see the father do uh, uh, healings and he would go do the same thing right and jesus said that also i do what i see the father doing so how did he know be led by the holy spirit so what happens you know we are in sync many times when we are out of sync we may not be wrong in the prayer that we are making but at that time maybe god wants us to pray about something completely different but we need the leading of the holy spirit so we can be led by him guided by him we can also pray in the spirit itself and in this way uh, our prayers will uh, be very very effective because you know we are in sync with what god wants done in the earth and what god wants done in our own lives 
okay so praying in the holy spirit partnering with the holy spirit okay the holy spirit can guide us uh, and he can direct us in our prayers uh, and uh, you know we can focus in on on the things that are really on the father's heart right now now we will talk more about the holy spirit aiding us in our prayer life uh, and uh, his help little later on an entire chapter is there so we can uh, talk about it but uh, please know that you know this is also a way in which we can establish a strong foundation for our prayer life so be led by the holy spirit the sixth foundation is to understand our position in Christ now when we talked about intimacy at that point itself we said that some barriers to an effective prayer life is the attitude that i carry okay uh, you could also put it as the image that i carry of myself in the presence of god now if my image in the presence of god is that i am unworthy or uh, i am unaccepted you know i don't feel secure whether my sins are fully forgiven or not will god hear me or not okay so all this has to do with my image of who i am now if i build that image based on the word of god in the word of god you know we are told that now that we are believers we are in christ jesus okay and in him lot of things have happened to us uh, and, and and you know things have turned around uh, you could say 180 degree total turn around has taken place in our lives because we are in Christ Jesus in Christ Jesus i'm joined together with him i'm one spirit with him in Christ Jesus i am blessed you know in Christ Jesus uh, i i uh, uh, have become a son and a daughter i have become an heir uh, uh, with the lord jesus christ in Christ Jesus i am forgiven i am sanctified i am made holy i am made the righteousness of god in Christ Jesus you know so this this is the reality of who i have become in christ jesus now when i do not carry that as uh, you know a part of me now i don't mean to say that you know only read it and that's about it no but when you imbibe it when you meditate on it when you accept it when you pray it through and when you declare it what happens to you you know that is who you are your mind is renewed to that reality and whenever we go to the lord in prayer i'm going from that position of who i am in christ jesus and that brings a confidence you know i can enter into the presence of god uh, in my time of need uh, uh, to receive grace and mercy right uh, and and god's throne is accessible to me 24 bar 7 god is my father he is my redeemer he has blessed me i am part of the new covenant that uh, you know christ is the mediator of and i can go and i can pray about various things you know i can be confident that i, I will receive god's answers so all this is possible you know when i know who i am in christ jesus but when i do not know my position in christ maybe my prayers might sound like uh god um i'm really not sure if you hear me but if you are hearing me then please help okay or i beg you please do this for me please god uh i hope you do it for me right because i don't understand my position of being loved okay or of being accepted uh, or of uh, uh, being victorious in christ jesus i don't understand my position of authority and dominion in christ jesus right so all these things matter when we pray and uh, that's why we are talking about it you know we can we can work on each one of uh, these aspects and strengthen our own uh, personal relationship with god so our position in christ is very very foundational to an effective prayer life and certainly a life of surrender as well because uh, you know when we pray it's not about uh, having what we want okay uh, if what we want is what god's word has provided for us well and good but if we are away from what the word of god has to offer for us uh, uh, then you know we we truly really not 
praying in sync with the heart of god okay and we are lacking that surrender but god in his word he says that he uh, does not want you know our burnt offerings and sacrifices you know if you recall that's what he told and that's what samuel uh, uh, told uh, f- because of the rebellion of saul but he said that god is looking for obedience okay he's looking for a surrendered life uh, and that is why we have to align our hearts to god's heart uh, and there can be times in our lives when you know we don't uh, want to be obedient and we are struggling to be obedient but you know we must always strive to come to a place of surrender surrender to what surrender to the will of god and when we pray a surrendered prayer in the will of god we will find that effective what is the opposite of that <coughs> excuse me we pray our own prayers we pray our own will now those kind of prayers may not get answered simply because that's not what god wants done right and then we are we feel sad that oh no god i really wanted this but you never did that but we never inquired of god whether it was his will in the first place okay and we were not willing to surrender to it so you know these are just some pointers uh, that will help us have the right foundation and uh, make our prayer life effective so at this point i think i will pause for a bit and uh, just want to hear from you any thoughts that you want to add to what i have uh, shared or comments or certain questions that you have in your mind we could uh work on that and continue with our next chapter okay so maybe uh, uh there are no questions that you want to ask at this point that's okay uh, but please do bring it up before the end of the class if you do have questions so moving forward to the example of the lord jesus uh we are in chapter 4 in our notes here uh when we talk about prayer uh one of the things that uh is so encouraging is the fact that the lord jesus himself uh was praying okay he was relating to god through prayer he was communicating communing with the father through prayer and he set the the biggest example of a life of prayer for us and jesus is our best example he is the best model uh you know anybody's life that you can study in scripture it's good but we study the life of jesus because the uh, book of hebrew says that he is the express image of god who god is he came to reveal that to us and when jesus is demonstrating a life of prayer that can only tell us how important prayer is in the life of a human being now jesus prayed and jesus prayed a lot jesus prayed all the time there are lots of scriptures uh, that are listed in our notes i think we can read a few of them uh, maybe i'll you know quickly read uh, through them so chapter 4 the beginning of our notes it says mark 135 now in the morning having risen a long while before daylight he went out and departed to a solitary place and there he prayed so what what is jesus doing waking up early in the morning setting time aside to do what to spend time with the father so jesus did that okay in mark 6 uh, you see that uh, he departed to a mountain to pray so i'm sure he had very busy uh, ministry and all that uh, obviously you know jesus thousands of people came and he was working his miracles so jesus was very busy in the ministry but what does he choose to do uh, you know at some point he closes off everything 
and he says he sends people away and he departs to a mountain to do what to commune with the father to build that relationship with the father again luke 5 we are told about him right uh, he does his ministry he heals people uh, and he does his mighty works in verse 16 of luke 5 so he himself often withdrew into the wilderness he goes to a secluded place for what to pray okay so jesus is making time for prayer almost every you know other passage that you read in the gospels now there are a few more and i am not going to read you know he went to a mountain to pray he went to a mountain to pray it says alone by himself so jesus made time for prayer obviously you know that was that is important to a human being and that is why jesus even jesus practiced prayer jesus never experienced failure in prayer okay uh at the time when he went to raise lazarus from the dead in john chapter 11 um uh, verses 41 and 42 you know he says this uh statement he says father i thank you that you have heard me okay uh and i know that you always hear me but because of the people who are standing by i said this that they may believe that you sent me so this is how jesus ministers to a dead man to raise him from the dead look at the confidence that he has he's just breathing a sentence there and saying father i know you always hear me you know he could have just whispered lazarus come forth and you know i'm sure lazarus would have risen from the dead but so that the people would hear he says a prayer and then he goes uh, and commands G, uh, lazarus to uh, come forth from the grave okay but what is the confidence that jesus has he knows that every prayer that he is praying is getting answered by the father so how do you rate uh, your success in in prayer i think it's hard to to actually uh, rate success and all uh, but one of the things we notice in the prayer life of jesus is whatever he asked the father like throughout you notice when he ministered to someone he said something it always happened okay i think there's only one passage where he ministers to a blind person and for the first time the blind person says i see people walking like trees but the second time that he commands that person uh, to be healed and be able to see he sees so it was fulfilled the blind to see uh, you know it was actually done so never ever do you see the lord jesus experiencing failure in prayer one of the reasons could be that he was so in sync with the heart of the father that he prayed uh by the prompting of the father you know he knew what the father needed done so he would speak into that situation okay and obviously if the father is already uh father's will is already there for that particular miracle to take place and jesus is praying into that miracle it's actually happening you know and the next one is actually happening it's actually happening so moving in the will of the father probably gave jesus this kind of a success that everything that he prayed was done now some of you might bring up uh, what happened in uh, matthew 26 when jesus said if it be your will god you know take away this cup from me so that he would not go to the cross okay that's another uh, that's another uh, thing that we will talk about that prayer was not answered because jesus was not praying in the will of the father the will of the father from the foundation of the world is what the lamb of god was slain before the foundation of the world so jesus in his human human uh, anguish is crying out that the purpose of god will not be accomplished right so that also shows us how jesus faced uh, the real pressures in this world as a human being but ultimately you know that last point in in the foundations of prayer that we learned the surrendered life 
he surrendered to the will of the father and he said okay god you know i am saying let me not die on the cross but let not my will but your will be done so he gave in and he surrendered himself and the will of god was done in the life of jesus which is his trial his crucifixion his death his burial and his resurrection and we know that that had to be done for humanity to be saved right so, but every prayer that jesus prayed was answered okay because he had this intimacy with god all the seven steps that we talked about earlier i'm sure jesus had that okay and no wonder his prayers were in line with the with the heart of the father and there was answer there was positive answer to every prayer which the lord jesus prayed and this is the example that we see in our best model the lord jesus christ so now that the lord jesus has set this kind of an example where he pursued a life of prayer and he had a successful prayer life what are you and i supposed to do you know in the word of god it says that uh, it is enough for a servant to be like the master at least okay if not surpassing the master uh, you know we would want what, what most of our teacher says i wish my students can be better than me okay we hope that can happen but if that doesn't happen so jesus said in matthew 10 verse 24 a disciple is not above his teacher nor a servant above his master verse 25 it is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master okay so if not surpass the teacher we should at least be like the teacher and notice what jesus said in luke 6 was 40 he says a disciple is not above his teacher but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher so we can at least be like our teacher who is our perfect teacher the lord jesus we can be like him at least and how can we be like him training we need some training we need some equipping we need some following after him right so when we do that we can at least be like jesus so what is at least like jesus have a strong prayer life because that is what we saw in the life of jesus so should every believer have this kind of a prayer life yes at least every believer should have a strong prayer life because we see that in the role model our example the best a uh, you know human being who ever lived jesus he also prayed the son of god only prayed now how can you and i say ah okay i am already the righteousness of god in christ jesus god knows my heart why should i pray i know i i you know we we know where we are coming from when we make statements like that but look at the life of the son of god he set aside time for communion with god now if he did it we don't have any excuse and a student should at least be like the teacher so if jesus had a prayer life you and i should have and develop the same kind of prayer life right and follow jesus in every way and when we do that we can also experience the kind of success uh, that jesus experienced in his prayer life okay and god answers us he uh, guarantees us that we will also uh, receive you know uh, uh, his response to the prayers that we pray there are so many scriptures that say that god is a prayer answering god that is um uh, ears are turned towards the cries of the righteous you know and if you recall in matthew chapter 7 uh, jesus said it repeatedly ask you shall receive uh, seek you will find knock and the door will, will be open to you because everyone who asks receives everyone who seeks finds everyone who knocks you know the door will be open to them so in in a in a manner of um, you know in those times when there was repetition in what a teacher was saying it meant that 
they were making a very strong point so even jesus told us you know when we pray uh, we will receive answers to our prayers when we seek god we will have his response so he was assuring us in that way and saying come on you know i am here to answer your prayer so i want you to have the assurance uh, or the guarantee of an answered prayer and when we pray in the will of god you know we will see the response of god and we will, we too can experience a successful prayer life the kind that jesus experienced so uh now some of us might ask the question why is it that sometimes we don't um receive answers to our prayer but there are a lot of scriptural reasons for that uh in in the book of james we are told that when we pray right we ask a miss or we ask according to our own desires and we miss asking in line with the will of god and that is the reason some of our prayers are not answered okay uh, and uh, what are some of the other reasons that our prayers are not answered okay uh, i don't really want to rush into this but uh, how about i pause here okay and uh, maybe we can have a couple of minutes of discussion about why is it that uh, our prayers are not answered you can just share your thoughts with me So maybe when it is not god's will okay 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 rosalind says uh, not praying in accordance with god's will yes that's true um maybe god got bigger plans than us and okay okay sure so similar god's plan is different and what we are asking is different uh, we just seeing our faith okay very good good faith is a, a, a very important component there so when we pray without faith can that happen no because god wants faith right anyone if you have faith uh, you you speak without doubting in your heart you speak to the mountain ask it to be removed and be cast into the sea it will be done for you but what is the prerequisite faith so good ribika yeah we need faith when we pray when we approach the throne of god what else thank you no problem in reasons in our life like pride sin yes so uh is it is it only you said pride is it yes ma'am okay pride very good very good And yeah so the sin, sin. thank you thank sin. you yeah so uh if we uh you know have iniquity in our hearts if we have sin in our hearts uh, god will not hear us and that's what the scripture says okay so these things in our like the wrong heart conditions can also prevent us from being heard that's true that's true great i mean you are you all already have the answers here what else um uh, ma'am more the delay more the glory okay more the delay more the glory mm. how about i say that maybe it's the timing uh the delay is because it's not yet god's timing that's why we didn't receive answer to that prayer yes ma'am okay okay fine so it's not god's timing and thereby you know some prayers are delayed the answers are delayed sure and the scripture also talks about like if we have something against our brother first we yes. have to uh, go and uh, fix it or you know or settle it reconcile yes yes and then come to god so i feel yeah if we have some <coughs> hate feelings yeah we must reconcile mm. Mm -hmm. true true divya that's correct yeah so you know again carrying sin unforgiveness bitterness we know that scripture says that these things are a hindrance to god hearing our prayers so um sometimes yeah sorry ma'am yes no no sometimes go ahead rose god sometimes god uh, wants to teach us patience before we mm. get the answer okay 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 yes i think that's true yeah we learn obedience 
that's true. Mm. So yes, uh, thank you. Uh, really, some good thoughts out there, uh, and uh, I think we have touched on uh, a couple of answers which are there in our notes. Uh, but there are, you know, one or two things that we missed out. So we said we are asking uh, in our own will and not God's will, and thereby it's not answered. Uh, we said that uh, uh, there are. Things in our hearts, in our lives, which hinder uh, God from answering, like pride, sin, disobedience, unforgiveness, even unbelief, not having faith, could could hinder us, right? So, uh, what we will do is we will stop right now. We can come back in the next class, and I will pick up from where I stopped. I will add to the to the reasons why we um, don't receive answers to prayer, uh, and uh, yeah, we. Could have a little bit of discussion and uh, you know get some understanding and then proceed uh, to some more content okay so uh, we will uh, close for now uh, and if okay uh, brother Avdesh is adding he says sometimes God is answering but we are not accepting okay okay yeah yeah correct that that too could be uh, a reason why we feel there's no answer He's answering in a different way. Okay. Okay. Rintu is asking the question. So how can we understand God's will? Okay. So uh, Rintu, uh, the, we can answer this uh, question quite elaborately. Uh, but I would uh, just put in a few pointers right now. The will of God is revealed in the word of God. Okay. And the spirit of God leads us into the will of God. So two things, two things that will help us identify the will of God. One is God's word. The other is the spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. So when we begin to rely on the word, when we begin to rely on the spirit, be assured that you are being directed into the will of God. Okay. Now, in addition to all this, if you want to understand the purpose of God for your life, now I would recommend there is a uh, uh, publication uh, at APC. Uh, it's available as PDF as well. It's called Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life. And uh, maybe you already have it as a course, I don't know, for the first years. But uh, if you don't, then just get that from our resources section on the website. And uh, that also will give you uh, a better explanation about God's will. Okay, and uh, Nickel, Nicholson um, uh, is sharing, like in Daniel, sometimes it could be Satan blocking our prayers and we need to be persistent. Yes, that's true. That's true. So sometimes prayers don't get answered because there is demonic opposition, right, to our prayers. And Rosalind, the delays can happen because of that as well. So that's correct, uh, uh, Nicholson. Thank you for sharing that thought. Um, yes. Yeah. So good, good. We're all thinking about it. We'll come back with questions, uh, spend some more time on the same subject, and we will continue. OK, uh, so uh, we can. OK, sorry, there was like a little bit of an internet issue there. So now we could close with a word of prayer, please. Uh, and I want to invite anyone to please go ahead and pray. प्रभु परमेश्वर हम धन्यवाद करते हैं तेरे चरणों में आते हैं नम्र और दीन बनकर परमेश्वर पिता आप महान हैं प्रभु आप दयालु हैं प्रभु परमेश्वर आप अब्राहम इशाहक और याकूब का परमेश्वर हैं प्रभु हम धन्यवाद करते हैं आज की इस क्लास के लिए प्रभु जो प्रार्थना प्रेयर और इंटरसेशन के लिए हम लोगों ने लिया है प्रभु जी प्रार्थना करते हैं प्रभु हम तेरी प्रार्थना में परमेश्वर पिता तेरे संगति में तेरे वचनों में प्रभु जी और परमेश्वर तेरे आत्मा में परमेश्वर पिता बढ़ते जाए परमेश्वर तेरे इच्छाओं को पाकर प्रभु जी हम धन्यवाद करते हैं तू महान है प्रभु हमारे साथ प्रभु जहां जहां से प्रभु जी भाई लोग बहन लोग जुड़े हैं प्रभु क्लास में प्रभु जी मैं प्रार्थना करता हूँ प्रभु जी अपनी महिमा के लिए अपने राज्य का विस्तार के लिए प्रभु और अपनी कलिसिया की स्थापना के लिए प्रभु जी आप हर एक को प्रभु जी आप इस्तेमाल करें प्रभु हम धन्यवाद करते हैं प्रभु जी 
मैम के लिए प्रभु जो प्रभु जी हमारे बीच में रखा है जिनसे प्रभु हम तेरे में और परमेश्वर पिता और आत्मिकता में प्रभु जी अच्छे से सीख रहे हैं बढ़ रहे हैं प्रभु हम धन्यवाद करते हैं उनके लिए प्रभु हम सारा आदर महिमा सम्मान तुझे देते हैं यह प्रार्थना अपने उद्धार करता जीवित यशु नाथरी के नाम से मांगते हैं आमेन 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 Amen amen thank you brother thank you brother avdesh for uh, that word of prayer so uh, yes thank you everyone thank you, for being uh, in this class you, god bless you uh, and we will thank, thank you, you and you're thank free you, to ma'am. thank you you're free to uh, uh, you know leave the class thank now you, but i think i will stay on for another 5 minutes or so in case you know there are some questions because I, somebody raised their hand so i'll stay on and answer some questions but otherwise you could leave no problem see you tomorrow thank you pastor no problem no problem you're welcome god bless if anyone has a question i'm here few more minutes Okay looks like we're done no problem yeah